Hi, in this slide, we're going to talk about what are the economic benefits to suppliers, distributors, and customers if we have higher fill rates on most profitable SK, most profitable, most popular SKUs. Later on, we'll actually see a case study where we have you know hard economic numbers on the the, the delta p bit that results from this. But for right now, I want you to think about. Um, if we had beefed up the number one item so that when when people ask for it, we have it, that would suggest that that demand then goes to that number one brand. It doesn't get shared out to the other brand. Um, when we do substitutions, we talked about the demand and forecast problem starts to be, you know, get shared out. And so we start to statistically not give the customers what they want, but more and more substitutions. If we have back orders, then we have twice the transactional cost. The customer has twice the set of paperwork and maybe a delay of whatever they want to do with our product. So what happens is um, the, uh, you know, everybody loses there. If we, if we have higher fill rates, our split shipments and the activity costs for those split shipments, that also goes down. Uh, if we have higher fill rates, the, the split orders, which give delays for the customer, will go down. So the customer has fewer delays. If we have higher fill rates, personnel productivity goes up because we could say, yes, I have it, as opposed to, well, I don't have it, but let me scramble and do workarounds. So how about if we do the substitute, uh, or we'll do the split shipment, or we'll back order and create twice the paperwork and activity costs and so forth. And morale goes up because we just, it's, it's just our job is easier. Our average gross margin dollar per line item goes up because we don't have split shipments, split split line items. So we have half here and half from somewhere else, or half here and half back ordered. Um, so our picks, picking productivity in the warehouse goes up. Our gross margin dollar per invoice goes up. Uh, our gross margin dollar per stop of the truck goes up. So what happens is for the same fixed activity sets of costs, more that all that incremental margin goes all the way to the bottom line, you know, save maybe incentive compensation. But there's nothing that has more powerful flow through to the bottom line than selling more old existing profitable items to the same old existing customers on an already profitable order. If we add more margin to it, it pounds to the bottom line. So later on, we'll look at a specific case study on selling uh, more core items to more core customers on a larger line item order size basis in the, uh, the go deep LIPA section. Thank you.